All right, guys. So after a few days of beating my head on the wall, I finally got my Zykoi uh, sequencer slash fail safe uh, all set up. Um, so you're gonna have to bear with me here. I'm trying. I'm doing this for record so I can maybe look back myself because every time I do one of these, um, it is a pain in the butt. So. Just let me, I'm gonna talk setup real quick. So if you're a Fataba guy, I'm just gonna speak Fataba. Um, if you want to, if you want to use uh, SBUS, then you can't use this RC input port. So you'll have to use the telemetry slash five port. So if you turn on SBUS, Fataba SBUS in the in the telemetry setup menu, and then it you then it asks you which channel SBUS do you want to use. So you assign it to say channel nine. Okay, so you okay, so now it's gonna work SBUS. So you you have to plug <clears throat> into the telemetry slash five port. And if you want to run telemetry, um, you know you can run a Y harness and go up to a SBUS2 port on the receiver and then have the other Y uh, lead go to the SBUS port. So SBUS is what's controlling it and then the SBUS2 is just the pressure reading. Okay, so if you wanna use the RC input, uh, which is what I'm doing because I'm using it on a power system versus going straight into the receiver, then you need to use, uh, turn off the SBUS function for Fataba and just run it like regular RC input. So that's confusing because uh, I came in this morning and I, was, I set one up to do all the programming on this one and then just make this one match or make my one in the F22 match this one. So, and I had to phone a friend, man. I, I, it wasn't reading an RC signal because I, I had everything plugged into the RC input, but I had it set up in the telemetry as an S bus. So if you're gonna do S bus, then you need to use just the telemetry five port going into an S bus port on your receiver or whatever power system you have. But if you're gonna, like these, these top ports along here are not SBUS. Everything coming out of here, these big leads are SBUS, which is where all my servos are on. But this stuff is essentially just, uh, it's either gonna be one through eight channel or nine through 16, whatever I set it to. So it's an actual channel, proportional channel. So if you're using something like this, then you, you need to use the RC input and disable SBUS in the telemetry setup doesn't mean you still can't get telemetry it just means you you can't you you have to use two ports versus one okay so now that that's done uh this stuff these instructions just don't make sense and from the the, jor the majority of people that like everybody i know that gets these it doesn't make sense either so they either they either quit and just don't use it and get something else or they do what we do and they mess with it and, 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 and call a friend and phone a friend until it works. So I had to, my guy for this is Mike. So I call Mike and we figured out that part of it. Uh, the not, re, not reading my radio signal. Well, once the radio signal problem was, was done, now it's back to the normal programming. So, um, and it, this will vary depending on how many valves or gear doors you have. So my setup is this, I have gear, I have an unlock on the gear, and then I have gear door. So I, I have three valves plugged into ports one, two, and three. Port one on here is for your, your gear valve or servo. Port two can be a gear door, port three can be a gear door or whatever. So what I did is I plugged in my, my gear valve into one. Port two is my one-way valve, which is for unlock. So it just has like a one-way, it has a, has, a, has a spring air cylinder, so it just needs to pull 
on the plunger to unlock the gear. And then once the gear comes up, that can shut off. And then the set, the third one is a gear door valve. So with that set up, and the easiest way I do this is, I'm gonna power up and just show you, is I have to watch, and what helps me is watching the display and, and how it goes through things. So what you have to know is this is kind of backwards. So when your gear's down, you're starting at this position and, you're in your, and your gear's down. So when you flip that switch, it's going to go step three, step two, step one. It's going to count down and then gear is going to come up. And then when you flip the switch to go gear down, it's going to go step one, step two, step three, gear down. So these steps have each step along this way has five things you can do to it. Open, closed, open, closed, open, closed. So since I'm only using the first three ports, I only need the first three uh, in each of these steps. So in gear up, I'm only going to adjust one, two, and three. Step one, I'm only going to adjust one, two, and three. And what you're doing when you adjust these one, two, and three, you're telling that valve to open or close. That's all you're doing. And sometimes you'll have the same open, 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 closed, closed, or, or vice versa. Because certain steps you don't need to do different things uh, but other times you may like if you have a gear door that closes after the gear comes down so you say the gear is down first thing it's going to happen in step three the gear is going to stay as it is and you're going to have one of your two valves open so a gear door will open and then in step two you'll have the gear come up that gear those gear doors will stay open and then once you get past the gear up position, so step one, you'll close those doors or close one door, or you may not even use this. You may just keep all the same settings here. And then when you get to gear up, you have the doors closed at that point. And then when you flip the switch again and step, well, you would have to do another step one. So in step one, you're going to have those all gear, all gear doors open. Step two, you're gonna keep all gear doors open and then you're gonna have your gear uh, valve activate and come down. Well then once it's down in step three, then you're gonna leave the, the, the gear valve as it is and you're gonna change one of your gear doors to close at that point while the other one stays open. So, and then when you get to gear down, you'll keep those same settings that you had in step three in gear, in gear down that lets you have the option to close a door after the gear is down while other doors stay open. And I hope that that makes sense. So, all right, so let me power this guy up and, um, and just kind of show you. And it's gonna be hard to see. You guys aren't gonna be able to see this. So you can kind of see here. Oh, all right, so everything's going to the, the to position. And when you set one of these up for the first time, you need to set the gear up position, the gear down position, so it knows where the switch is, the switch reads, and that kind of stuff. So, so here's what we got. So see, you've got gear down, so the switch is gear is in the down position. You've got gear, so in this position, every there's your five steps, and like I said, I'm only using three steps of the five. Yeah, it's hard, and that's kind of what's confusing because those aren't the steps. Those are just the five options per step. And the gear down and gear up point is a step. So step this step with the gear down, those five uh, options are what I have. Opened, closed, closed. So when you flip the switch to up, you're going to see... You're gonna see step three, step two, step one, and then you'll see gear up message. And each one of those steps, you have five options to change the valve. So watch this. Switch step one, step two, step three, and then it'll go gear up. Okay? So, and I got a pulse on the uh, gear doors so they don't slam shut. So here, here we go again. So the gear is actually up now, the switch is up. So I'm gonna flip the switch again 
And now you're gonna see step three, step two, step one, I gotta change delays, and then gear down. And each one of those, gear down, step one, step two, step three, gear up, you can adjust the, the valves to do what you want. And there's five options in each of those steps, but you, I am only using three because I only have three valves. So, and, and you'll watch as it goes through those steps, those five little options below it will change to corresponding whatever you've done in your little chart of clothes. So I had to draw this shit out. I draw it out uh, and label it because even when looking at their chart, it's the only way I can keep, keep up with it. So like me, gear down position, I hit the button, I'm gonna see step one, I leave the gear open because that's, well, so here we go. So gear down, my valves are open, closed, and closed. So when I hit the switch, it goes from gear down to step one. So the first, the first thing in step one that really happens is I activate valve two or step valve two, which sends pressure to my unlock while the gear remains the same and the gear doors remain the same. Step two, at this point, I have the gear close, gear valve close, which actually sends pressure to make the gear come up. I leave the unlock open, the gear doors stay open, and then it goes to step three. The gear valve is closed, I leave it in the closed state, so that's the up position. At this point, I turn off the little one-way valve because I don't need pressure once it's unlocked. And then I leave the gear doors as they are. They're still open. Gear up position. I leave the valve closed on the gear because it stays up. The power is off to the locks valve because I don't need it to do anything. And then I have the gear door close. So when I flip the switch back down, the first thing that happens is it jumps to step three, gear doors open, powers off to the lock because I don't need it to, to do anything on the down. Valve doesn't move, goes to step two, valve doesn't move. It do, and I can't, I can't change this, even though I don't need anything to work on the, on the lock cylinder on the down because it has a spring that automatically locks it. It just needs to unlock. I, it, it's going to go back through the same same sequence and settings as it works its way to the down position. So it'll energize the, the lock valve. Gear doors are still uh, uh, open. And then on step one, it will activate the gear valve. The gear comes down. The Unfortunately, it gets a little air pressure on the lock cylinder. Air door or gear doors stay open. And then it goes to the gear down kind of message, and then you leave the gear, the valve open. I turn off power to the lock cylinder because, like I said, it doesn't need it once it's down and locked. And then the gear doors stay open. So that's kind of how this works, and it's just very confusing. And what helps me, like I said, is flipping a switch and just watching these as it goes through each step watching the five options and like i said i only need the gear one d and and three so one two and three those are your positions on the controller and the g is just saying hey that's your gear and that's a door and that's whatever so but watch this end it one more time when i flip the switch so gear is down i'm going to flip the switch there it is step two Step three, and then the gear up position. And you can change the delay between each step, and that's what I gotta do now. I haven't done that, but I'm gonna change the delays between the steps. And that's, then, it, then the final step is gear up. So you flip the switch again, it's gonna go to step three, step two, Step one, and then the gear down. And I'm gonna put a delay going from gear down or gear up to step three.
because I got to give the air, the uh, gear doors time to open before it goes to step two, which activates my air valve for my gear. Just because I, I, I like having a little bit of a, a delay on it. I've got a six second pulse in here, so I may lower that to like four. Uh, just depends on, you know, once I get it in the aircraft and start uh, adjusting the, um, you know, putting the gear up and down. So I hope that helps. And if anything, it'll remind me how to do this uh, in the future if I need help. Um, great units. They do everything you needed to do on anything you could possibly need it to do it on, but it's just impossible. Almost, it's not impossible because I did it, I just showed you, but it takes a lot of like looking at it and messing around with it. Unless it makes sense to you, like, I, you know, you may read that, those instructions, and it makes perfectly good sense to you, but I know it's things reversed than the manual. It's like, they're like, I swear it's like uh, Gaspar is. Uh, dyslexic and does everything backwards uh, it just doesn't make sense to the majority of us uh, here in uh, in the US but so now that that's figured out I've got to transfer my settings to the f-22 and get back to finishing on that because here it is Sunday afternoon and I haven't done anything on that because of all the electrical stuff that I'm having uh, but this is kind of long-winded, so I'm going to end this now, and I'm going to get back to the F-22. Cheers. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Like and subscribe. Uh, tell me what you think.